living costs in Texas. Wait, don't you mean cost of living in Texas? No, no, excuse me. I've done my research, okay? And this is the term people are using when they Google. Oh, Google, right, 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 right. right. So we're gonna look at the living costs across Texas. Mm -hmm. Housing, utilities, gas, groceries, and stuff. Last week I drove through six smaller cities in between Austin and San Antonio. This week, we're gonna visit the big city, starting in Dallas. Uh, you ready? Dallas? That's a four hour drive. How about this? Whoa, an illusion. Yeah. I was gonna suggest that. You know, since we don't have to drive, how about a White Claw? I'm gonna go get one. <clears throat> Welcome back everyone, I'm Tony Freeze with EXP Realty and I'm glad you found my channel where I showcase my hometown New Braunfels, Texas. Today I'm looking at what it costs to live in Texas compared to national averages. Not just New Braunfels, but the big city areas. I'll save my personal experience with things like gas, groceries, and dinner prices for the end. You may find some of this information illuminating, especially if you had the idea that moving here was going to save you a whole bunch of money. What with housing prices appearing lower than where you're from, no state income tax, right? So let's jump in. The first thing that I wanted to do is address the high property taxes. They're not the highest in the U.S., but you do have to consider that it is a significant expense. And to calculate it, you also need to figure out your homestead exemption. We'll get to that in just a second. To keep things simple, I'll use average figures in an illustration. Property taxes are about 2.5%. Could be more, could be less. It'll include school district, county, and city taxes. Some areas also have municipal utility districts, or MUD taxes, which provide developers alternative ways to finance infrastructure. Planned improvement districts, or PIDs, can also be used for sidewalks and landscaping, parks, and stuff like that. To figure out what your property taxes are going to be, you're going to want to first subtract your homestead exemption. Typically $25,000 could be more or less from your home value, and then multiply it by your tax rate. Okay? For example, let's say a home in Texas costs $225,000 minus the homestead exemption of $25,000 equals $200,000. Now, multiply that adjusted figure by 2.5% and you're looking at a $5,000 per year tax bill or about $417 per month. For property taxes, that's a lot. So make sure to factor that into your cost of living. But of course, you may already know that there is no state income tax here. Depending on where you're moving from, this could be a wash. Could be more expensive or could be a net positive for you still. While we're at it, we should also consider HOAs. On average, 25% of homeowners in the U.S live in properties with an HOA, that's a homeowners association. Making sure your lawns are tidy and you're chipping in for the common amenities like tennis courts and public areas. The prices range from $100 to $700 per month, with the average being between $200 and $300. So, another expense to remember. Most homes in newer communities have this. Another tax rate to consider is our state city and county sales tax. From San Antonio to Austin and everything in between, it adds up to 8.25%. Let's look at living costs in the major metropolitan areas. We've got four in Texas, some of the biggest in the country. Apparently, we're in Dallas, so let's start here. I lived here when I was a kid. When it comes to home prices, I'm looking at metro area data of existing single family homes from the National Association of Realtors for the fourth quarter of 2020, got it? These are metro areas and will be different from cities proper and from individual suburban areas. But we're keeping our illustrations simple here. So looky here, the median home price in the DFW Arlington area is more than the median price in Texas, but less than the median price in the USA. Reynolds are a little more too. For these other costs, the source I like to use is bestplaces.net. They have a lot of good comprehensive data. I think it's time they did some updates, but it's still useful to look at. And these are percentages. So you can see that things like groceries and healthcare are in line with the national average, right? 100% all the way down for the US is the baseline. And groceries in DFW is 99% of that. I think what stands out here is transportation. You've got to have a car in most places in Texas. This figure doesn't include the cost of the car itself but it does include gas, insurance, maintenance, and mass transit. 
Let's go to Houston. Once again, we're talking about not just Houston, but the greater Houston Woodlands Sugarland area. They used to call it Houston Galveston, but uh, these two suburban cities are closer and have grown so huge that it, it makes sense. Healthcare is really low here. The data includes the standard daily rate for a hospital room, the cost of a doctor's visit, and a dental checkup. It's worth noting that Houston hospitals are absolutely world-class. There is no better place on the planet than MD Anderson for cancer care. Overall, we're right in line with the national average. The transportation costs are the highest on the list. No question, you are SOL if you don't have a vehicle. I spent most of my adult life there, and I once went for about two months without a car, and I lived and worked on opposite sides of town. Had to take several buses. That is not something you want to put yourself through if you can help it. Let's go to Austin. Housing is quite a bit more expensive in Austin. If we take out Round Rock and talk about just the city of Austin, it's, it's actually quite a bit more. It's also hard to buy here right now. See my previous video for a little more info on that. Rents are also higher. A lot of people are renting right now, waiting for homes to become available. Groceries and healthcare are lower than the national average. Transportation, high. Let me go ahead and say that traffic is bad on every highway, both directions, all times of the day, every day of the week. <laughs> Frustrating for me visiting there, but I've talked with people from Los Angeles to say Psh, that is nothing. So go figure. San Antonio, here we come. They like to lump San Antonio and New Braunfels together in their metro area. Even though New Braunfels is almost as close to Austin, that's okay, I love San Antonio. Everything is cheaper there. Even the transportation costs are in line with the national average. The rents are less too. The only metro area on our list where the overall percentage of 99.7% was less than the national average. Let me tell you what we actually shell out for a few things here in New Braunfels. But first, I wanted to ask you to give my video a like, even if you think it's the worst video you've ever seen. Just click the like button. Also, subscribe and even hit the notification bell, which lets you know I've posted a new video. This helps my channel tremendously, because when viewers do that, the YouTube computers think, hey, People like this guy. Let's offer it up to others that are searching for this kind of content. You see? So, thank you. The actual costs are going to be a little more in New Braunfels than in San Antonio, but not much. The transportation costs are actually less. Only 86%. Probably because of all those golf carts people are driving around here. Gas prices today in February 2021 are in the $2 to $2.10 cent range. Loaf of bread? $3.07. Gallon of milk? $1.79. 80-20 ground chuck beef, $4.42 a pound. Average price for a hamburger, $3.91. Your average energy bill in New Braunfels is $193.98 per month. That's about what ours is. We have a new HVAC, but our home is 17 years old. As a general rule, because of the technology, the newer the home, the lower your utility costs per square foot is going to be. Also, a lot of homes around here have natural gas, which is a lot less. Not us. Typical entree at McAdoo's Seafood Restaurant is $28. Cup of gumbo, $9. Other appetizers, $15. It's a little more than some of your best places in Houston. But we're landlocked, so all that fresh food has to travel here. I mention this place because it really is as good as any big city fish joint. Typical entree at our favorite Mexican restaurant, Las Fontanas, $15. Lunch menu items, $12. Large appetizer, $14. 16-ounce Mexican draft beer, $5.5. A veterinary visit is $46.58. Three-star hotels, a la Hampton Inn or La Quinta, 60 to 80 bucks a night. Your mileage may vary. I think overall the cost of living in Texas is in line with the rest of the country. It's a lateral adjustment for most unless you're moving from California or New York. Your big takeaways are you must have a car. Transportation costs are high. With remote work and online shopping becoming much more common, this will probably come down. It'll probably come down everywhere, really. There is no state income tax in Texas, but property taxes are high. They gotta get you somehow, folks. I've talked with a lot of people moving here who are downsizing their home, thus avoiding the high property tax and saving a bundle on their mortgage, planning on using some of that savings to travel more in, say, the warmer months. There's a lot to consider. And if you are thinking about moving to Texas, especially somewhere along the I-35 corridor between Austin and San Antonio, text me, give me a call or email me. I'd love to hear all about your exciting plans. If you haven't already, make sure you check out some of my earlier videos. And we'll see you next week for a new one.